Sailing is using the wind to propel a boat. People have been doing this for thousands of years, but with the development of steam and then internal combustion power, the role of sailing has been limited to use by sportsmen and recreationalists. The specific boats I'll be talking about are generally called race or cruiser type boats. They are good all-arounders. They are generally about 20 to 50 feet long and have a cabin, an auxiliary gas or diesel engine, and living accommodation for extended trips. They are generally rigged in such a way to allow the owners to efficiently sail them with small crews or single-handedly. Sailing offers a unique sensation as each gust of the wind impacts the speed and lean angle of the boat. These sailboats get nowhere fast. However, one properly equipped can sail incredible distances, including circumnavigation of the globe. Sailboats can sail in about any direction besides approximately 45 degrees of directly into the wind. They're designed to work efficiently upwind as well as downwind. In this next graphic, I have a recorded journey from Putin Bay to a marina in Sandusky, Ohio. I added arrows in red to indicate the direction the wind was blowing during the trip. You notice on a portion of the trip in the Sandusky Bay, I had to tack back and forth to make forward progress against the wind, but ultimately I got where I needed to go. Because of the variability of the wind and the way that the direction of the wind impacts the route, it is really difficult to predict the duration of a particular voyage. The two comments I get most when I tell someone I sail is that it must be a lot of work or it must be really relaxing. It's actually both but usually not at the same time. The amount of force the wind puts on the sail is not linear with the wind. It goes up exponentially with the speed of the wind. So the difference in experience varies quite a bit depending on the wind speed. On a low wind day with a consistent breeze, I can balance the sails and the boat will usually hold a course for long periods. At other times when the wind is greater, I might need to constantly be steering the boat and altering sail trim, which becomes exhausting. There are ways to have steering be automatic with electronic autopilots and mechanical self-steering rigs. It's no secret the boats cost money. Sailboats are not an exception to that reality, but depending on the size, the age, and the general configuration, that cost can vary quite a bit. For a general rule, the larger the boat, the more everything will cost. A larger sailboat needs larger lines, larger sails, more robust deck hardware, a larger dock, a larger engine, and incur larger storage and yard fees. With that said, larger boats have more space for accommodation and usually handle rough seas more comfortably than smaller boats. Also a big factor in a sailboat speed is the waterline length. So a larger sailboat would usually be faster than a smaller one. Someone considering the purchase of a sailboat needs to consider exactly what they will be using the boat for and how frequently. I recommend anyone that's interested in sailing get some experience on someone else's boat before purchasing their own. I started sailing because it seemed like a way to get out on the water that gave me something to do. I keep sailing because I love how the boat responds to it when you get the sails perfectly trimmed and the sense of peace and freedom when you pull into a harbor of a remote island and drop anchor. My current boat is 41 feet long and is old school. I've owned other boats in the past and all of them have had unique personalities. They have things they did well, and they have things they did less well. Every boat will come with a set of compromises. I tend to gravitate to older designs and the characteristics that come with them. In the current video, a real cool fella is sailing on a beautiful evening in the Sandusky Bay with a manageable but motivating breeze. He's going downwind on a broad reach. Notice the head sails being blanketed by the mainsail, not always full. He will jibe the mainsail and bring it over to the other side of the wind. The initial try fails. Just have to turn the boat a little bit more to change the point that the boat sees the wind and it'll go.
now the boat is wing and wing with one sail on one side of the boat and the other sail on the other side of the boat, maximizing the area of sail perpendicular to the wind. Generally, when on this point of sail, you're going straight downwind and you're using a preventer line that keeps the boom pulled out to that side. So if you accidentally turn and get the wind on the other side of the sail, it doesn't swing over and cause any damage. Now on this trip, there's not enough sea room to really justify setting that up. So after a little bit of time, he's going to turn the boat and get the uh, head sail over to the other side of the boat to go on a broad reach. sail fills and the boat goes a little bit faster. I mentioned how racer cruisers are good all-rounders. There are sailboats that are more biased towards a specific purpose, but these more specialty boats will generally carry a heftier price tag than those general purpose production built racer cruiser models. You can race these boats with a handicap system that allows a degree of parity. I myself am more interested in cruising, where one lives and travels on their boat. Some people cruise all over the world. For others, their cruising might be limited to short vacations around the Great Lakes. With opportunities to work remotely becoming more available in the recent years, more individuals are finding ways to manage a more serious sailing lifestyle than would have been possible in the past. While this was focused on boats that are suitable for cruising, I should briefly cover another type of sailboat called dinghy sailboats. These are small, usually only large enough for one or two people, but they are usually pretty modestly priced and have minimal cost to keep. They're extremely fun to sail and a great way to get into sailing before deciding if stepping up to a larger boat is right for you. Dinghy sailboats are generally easy to launch, so you just take it to an appropriately sized body of water, put up that mast, and toss it in. Thank you for joining me on this journey. We'll let the music play out as Benjamin and the Sloop Lionheart sail into the sunset.